Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about diffusion current and its relationship to total current density. Our goals for this video are to describe the concept of carrier diffusion, in particular in a semiconductor, derive an equation for diffusion current density, and combine these two concepts of carrier drift and diffusion together to come up with a total current density equation. The concept of diffusion is not altogether unfamiliar. Over here on the left, I have a glass of water, as well as a dropper full of food coloring. As you can picture, once we squeeze a drop out of this food coloring, and once that drop hits the water, very quickly the food coloring molecules diffuse throughout the water. This concept of diffusion in the glass of water with food coloring is very similar to that of the concept of diffusion in a semiconductor. Up here, I have a picture of a semiconductor block and what I've depicted here is a higher concentration of carriers, the darker blue, on the left, and it slowly fades and has less concentration on the right. And what they want to do is equalize throughout the material. So we're going to have a net flow of carriers in the direction to the right. But what kind of movement governs these carriers, and how do we express that in terms of an equation? Here, I have a simplified picture of that semiconductor and I have a bunch of blue dots that represent charge carriers. As we can imagine, these carriers want to equalize themselves throughout this material. And if we were to look at how the carriers flow across the threshold, say at x equals zero, we would see that there's a net flow across that threshold. There's a couple of different types of distributions of carriers that we want to consider. One is a linear distribution of carriers across the device. The next is, an exponential distribution of carriers across the device. These two are very common in semiconductor devices, and it turns out that their mathematical expressions are very convenient. As you can see, in a linear system, the slope is a constant value, whereas in an exponential, well, taking the derivative of an exponential is the exponential itself, plus a few things out in front. The motion of these carriers is caused by thermal energy. And so therefore, there's some random movement of these carriers around the system. They're going to slowly diffuse across. And that flux of carriers is governed by a law called Fick's law, which is shown here, as J equals minus the diffusion constant times the spatial change of carriers. But Fick's law is generic and not necessarily specific to semiconductors. So how do we take this idea of flux density and turn it into something that relates to semiconductors? Our concern for semiconductors is the movement of charge carriers. Therefore, there's a very simple change that we can make to this equation. All we have to do is add a charge to this equation for the particular type of carrier that we're concerned about, a negative charge for an electron and a positive charge for a hole. Therefore, we can simply write that the diffusion current equation for the electron is equal to its charge, which is minus E, times the equation here of minus D sub N, dN of X, dX. Simplifying, we get E dN, dN of X, dX. Since the whole has a positive charge, the substitution is much more simple. The diffusion current for the whole is equal to minus E d sub p dp of x dx. Now that we've derived an equation for diffusion current density, we can move our attention to the concept of total current density. As a reminder, we have two types of current, drift current and diffusion current. Drift current is caused by the presence of an electric field in the device, whereas diffusion is caused by a spatial difference or a non-uniform distribution of carriers. It should be no surprise then that the total current density is the combination of drift current and diffusion current densities. Expanding this equation gives us four terms. And this is our four term equation for total current density. No worries though, even though this has four different terms, many of these terms will cancel in a given problem for deriving current in a semiconductor. And on that good note, that concludes this video of Unwired Learning.